Welcome to Australian Earth Science Education. In this experiment, we are going to model the effect of temperature on oxygen isotopes in the sea and on land. To make your isotopes, you will need table tennis balls, a candle, matches, a tea towel to stop the balls rolling around, a glue gun, a steel nail, and pliers. For the experiment itself, you will need even numbers of heavy and light isotope balls, a dinner plate, and a blow dryer. O18 is the heavier isotope of oxygen and is less common in reality. However, in our model, we will have equal numbers of both isotopes. There are two common stable isotopes of oxygen, O18 and O16. The numbers refer to their mass. These oxygen isotopes are found in the oxygen in water. How do we use isotopes to tell temperature? Oxygen isotopes in ocean water are incorporated into carbonates in the shells of marine organisms and in limestone formed by chemical precipitation. Scientists can analyze cores of sediment to investigate the ratios of oxygen isotopes and use these, along with ice core information, to determine past temperature. It is the change in the amount of O18 that is key. This is expressed as delta O18 on the graph. The time scale for sediment cores is over millions of years. Marine sediments provide ancient evidence of temperature. As water evaporates, the water and its oxygen leaves the oceans and is deposited on land as precipitation. Some of this precipitation is snow that is compacted over time into ice. We study ice cores to learn more about past climate. The ice cores also trap gases, so we can relate oxygen isotopes in the water to carbon dioxide levels in the air and then to temperature. This is useful over times on the order of hundreds of thousands of years. When making our ping pong ball isotopes, we need to consider possible risks. Tie back long hair so that it does not get singed by the candle flame. Handle the hot nail and glue gum tip with care. Make sure that they have cooled fully before you put them away. Use the pliers to hold the nail tip in the candle flame for 10 to 20 seconds. When it is hot, press it gently onto the ball. It will easily melt through the thin plastic. Reheat for five seconds before making a hole in the next ball. Heat the nail again if it doesn't melt through the plastic the first time. To make the heavy O18 isotope, place the tip of your glue gun on the hole in the ball and squeeze the glue gun four times. The tip will widen the hole slightly. When you're finished, fill the hole with excess glue. Repeat the process with the rest of your heavy isotope balls. For our first experiment, we will investigate what happens when there is a low amount of energy. This is a model of cold conditions. The blow dryer is applied briefly to our ocean model. In this low energy experiment, only three oxygens evaporated from our model ocean. All three of these were O16. These three oxygens represent the isotopes that would be present on land. In this case, there would be a 3 to 0 ratio of O16 to O18 on land and a 7 to 10 ratio of O16 to O18 in the oceans. For our second experiment, we will investigate what happens when there is a high amount of energy. This is a model of warm conditions. We will use the blow dryer more vigorously for this experiment. In the high energy experiment, 11 oxygens evaporated from our model ocean. Six were O16 and five were O18. When there's more energy, it is more likely that O18 will evaporate. In this case, there would be a 6 to 5 ratio of O16 to O18 on land and a 4 to 5 ratio of O16 to O18 in the oceans. What conclusions can we draw from these experiments? We used a model of oxygen isotopes in the oceans. Models are very important in science. This model is a simplified version of reality that helps us to understand how oxygen isotopes are used to determine past temperature. This model allows us to vary the amount of energy applied to the system and see the results. Models help us to understand the real world. Try this one for yourself. How could you improve the validity of the experiments? If a model is not valid, it cannot provide helpful information. Is this experiment reliable? Try running the simulation several times to determine an average ratio of isotopes in high and low energy conditions. Are the results consistent? Finally, can you think of any improvements to the model and experimental method? Maybe you can recruit someone to help pick up the ping pong balls.